This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, the insane Daryl Wayne and I, I'm Mark Allen, we're going to take a look at two issues that I think are very, very important. We're going to talk about Lyme disease and black mold during the second half of our show. These are things that are happening. We're hearing about them in the news all the time. We're going to begin our show uh, with a look at a book called Pluck, uh, Lessons We Learn for Improving Healthcare in the World. This is a book by Alfred Sa- uh, Sadler and his twin brother, Blair Sadler. Uh, and they spent years together at the NIH. We're going to find out about them. We'll be spending some time with Fred. He's the medical side of uh, the Sadler twins, uh, Blair being the attorney. Uh, Fred, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be with you. I'm very excited to be part of this uh, adventure together. Yeah, and that's what it is. It is an adventure. Um, I can remember, I mean, the word pluck is... Yeah, you know, exuberance, I think is a, 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 a good word. But I'm, I'm, cons- I'm interested how you came up with the name pluck, because I'm not exuberant about our health care in this country right now. Well, there, there are other definitions, courage, uh, gumption, having chutzpah, and then... <laughs> In essence, taking action, maybe with or without exuberance, but having, if we, a lot of us have bright ideas, I think this should be fixed, or I'd like to get involved in this, but if we just sit with and admire that idea, as Congressman John Lewis said, we can be all fame, interested in, in democracy and the importance of it, but if we don't get out there and take action to preserve our democracy, we will lose it as a country. And, and that's what's happening today. And we quote, it's what's happening today. We quote that in the book. And I, I think that's a, a good paradigm for Pluck. As a lot of authors are advised, we were advised when we were talking about writing this book, which I'll get to the subject matter in a moment, we're combining medical, legal issues and how they overlapped, that we needed to have a catchy title. And we had all kinds of boring titles about the power of we and collaboration, and all of which were true as it related to the book, but then finally came up with pluck. And what that means is just what I I said earlier, taking the initiative. And then what's interesting, if you look at the five letters in the word, and uh, the the book has the P in parenthesis to emphasize the P part, the action part, but the other four letters are luck, L-U-C-K. And it's amazing, and it happened to us, over and over again, that if we take action, any of us in whatever area we want to improve in our society, we find others who are similarly inclined. And that's where the luck comes in. And the like-minded. Exactly, like-minded. And therefore, it's not just us fighting upstream in an area that we really believe in, but there's a whole other group of people. And in fact, if we don't find that, Maybe it's time to take a left turn and take a different road. Well, I'm glad you took a left turn, not a right turn. Um, I'm I'm really interested in your thought of, on this, and I've asked this question many times. Is American health care broken? I think there are a lot of things about American health care that are very, very good. And when one of the four areas that we talk about, four major areas that we worked on together, the the advances over 55 years in organ transplantation, in emergency medicine, in the workforce, having physician assistants and nurse practitioners joining in to work with physicians, and finally in biomedical ethics have been dramatic. So tremendous improvement. And also all kinds of other technical areas. Think of the uh, kinds of surgery that can be done arthroscopically that are so much better. So all of those elements are better than they were when uh, I was growing up in medicine. But what I think is broken is the fact that we don't have a uh, universal system as all other developed countries do that we're compared to. And as a result, our cost per 
individual is twice as high. We still have some uninsured people. The insurance companies have a tremendous amount of power over our decision making and in fact can still require us as physicians to require what's called prior authorization. We want to get a special study for you, Mark, for your whatever problem we're working up. And I have to call someone who's often not very medically trained at an insurance company who is frankly encouraged to say no, because the less they support, the more money is available for their shareholders. That we don't want that kind of, we don't want money and medicine. The same is true of big pharma, in my opinion. We did get this law passed just the other day. That Fantastic. Helps, yes. Helps a little bit. Helps a little bit. But we, the, the corporate practice of medicine means that uh, capitalism has too big a role in health. And so, yes, that part of it's broken. We need to fix it. As as a physician, if, if you say, Mark or Daryl, I, I, I think you should have text, test XYZ, and the insurance company says, well, we only want you to do text, test XY, and you know that it's not going to be adequate, do you fight it? Can a physician say, no? Yes, we can fight it, but you can, you can imagine it takes time. You have to call. Uh so-and-so is not available at the Aetna or wherever, you know, insurance company, and uh, we'll get back to you. So, and you, this piles up if you have four or five of these a day to do, you know, um, it has nothing to do with what I was trained to do as a physician uh, or my colleagues in whatever area. I'm a general internist by training, uh, primary care doctor, but whatever field we're in, we get the same kind of paperwork, not same the the same paperwork nonsense is 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 what it is and and i guess uh, to use your word from earlier you need the doctor needs to have chutzpah to go up against the insurance company to take care of their patient what a waste of time yeah it is it is a waste of time but i think uh going positively i think we can if we get together as and keep pushing on this area uh, even though you could come back at me, Mark, and say, we've been doing it for decades and we haven't made much progress. Well, we made some progress with Obamacare. We made quite a bit of a progress. Right. In, you know, 11 years ago. And we just made a little more progress the other day, amazingly. Uh, so uh, I think there is hope. Uh, I'd like to get to the lessons that we learned. Sure. That, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break in a moment. Okay. And we're going to talk about the Good Samaritan rules. I mean, it just seems to me that uh, the lawyers may have gotten in the way here of of helping to take care of people. Um, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in, in a moment. But one real quick question. How do we rate? How does America rate compared to other uh, industrialized countries? In terms of healthcare, I, last I looked, it was like thirty something. Well, we're pretty far down the line in the well, certainly in the twenties. Twenty, it depends how many countries you have. If you rate thirty, we're probably twenty eight, uh, because you look at infant mortality, you look at cost, you look at a number of things, and certainly the poorer people who don't have as good access to care, um, like the more to the uh, maternal mortality among black pregnant women is a lot higher than among white women, for example. And that's just inexcusable. We need to it is. Uh, the name of the book is Pluck, and that's P-L-U-C-K with the P in parentheses. We're speaking with uh, Fred uh, Sadler, uh, who co-wrote the book with his brother, his twin brother, Blair Sadler. And we're going to take time out. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation and look at some of the lessons that uh, uh, Fred and Blair have learned as uh, they spent years with the NIH. I'm Mark Allen along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Don't go away as Late Night Health continues.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. Late Night Health continues. Be sure to join us at LateNightHealth.com. LateNightHealth.com. We'll have a pretty picture of, uh, of Blair and, and, uh, and his brother Fred uh, on our uh, website, as well as some information about the book and about what these guys are up to. So that'll happen uh, very soon at LateNightHealth.com. Our guest is uh, the co-author of Pluck, Lessons We Learn for Improving Healthcare and the World, uh, Fred Sadler. Uh, Fred, I made a mistake. You were at the NIH for three years and then Yale for three. Three years and then at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for three years. Got it. So we worked together for nine years and that's what a lot of the substance of the early part of the book is about is the four areas in healthcare that we worked on and the way we collaborated and the uh, opportunities we had in all four areas we were rookies when we went in because we started out at NIH at age 26 and hardly were esteemed physician and lawyer in the, in the world and one of uh, Blair's great law professors advised us when we asked him are we too young to do anything like this will anybody listen to us and he said absolutely go for it if you have the opportunity take it and that's take the road less traveled was one of our 15 lessons that someone named robert frost wrote uh, a while back and it certainly carried us or sometimes if even if there is no road at all as there was in our case uh, create a road find a road make your own road 
which just goes to show you that one or two people can make a difference. Exactly, exactly. And um, Margaret Mead is quoted as saying, you know, something to that effect that the all great change in the world happened because of one or two people working together passionately on something they believed in. Let's talk about a couple of the lessons. Um, uh, I, I just told you a, a very sad story about uh, the DMV here in California and me. However, I, uh, I always check off the little thing that says organ donor. Right. Um, tell us about how that happened with you, the organ trans transplantation, uh, because it was almost non-existent when you were doing this in the 60s. It's a remarkable story, and I'll just do a very quick highlight, obviously, now. When we first got to the National Institutes of Health as commissioned officers in the Public Health Service, which is the sixth uniformed service, it's not a military service, um, but you can spend your two years in the Public Health Service at the NIH or the CDC or the Indian Health Service, and that counts uh, just the way if you would in the Army, Navy, Air Force, etc. So wow. we are in the director's office of the NIH as, and we walk into this wonderful man who had been running that office for years. And he said, we've got a problem. It had to do with collecting pituitary glands from cadavers from all around the country, 72,000 a year. And the reason they wanted to get that many and needed that many is the pituitary gland up in our brain is a very small gland. One of the uh, hormones it produces is human growth hormone. And if you or I don't have enough growing up, we become a dwarf. And the question is, how much human growth hormone do you need over what period of time? That was the study. That was why you know, a few years earlier, this agency, the National Pituitary Agency, was set up to do it. Well, they got into problems in a couple of areas where uh, glands were being taken in medical examiner's office without consent. And the medical examiner in each state has authority to do an autopsy, whether there's a suspicion of homicide, suicide, um, serious pandemic, uh, unexplained illness without consent, in fact, over the objection of the next of kin. But you don't have the right to take an organ that's unrelated to that. So we got into, went to the Georgetown Law Library, which is right near Bethesda in Maryland, where NIH is located, and learned all about the four different laws in each state that have to do with dead bodies. And then within five months of our learning a lot about this, Christian Bernard of South Africa did the first human heart transplant. That's yeah. the luck part of pluck. So all of oh. our little issue that was very important, but a niche issue, was front page news everywhere on the nightly news. And Christian Bernard was man of the year. And then we met, uh, the next lucky thing was we met a group of lawyers uh, that is now called the Uniform Law Commission that was founded in 1892 to work on state law where the US Constitution says, this is an area of state concern. But where we would all agree, wouldn't it be nice if all the state laws were the same to make our world work better? And there are countless examples we can think of. And they've been working on that. Well, they'd already been started working on a model donation law. We met this marvelous senior professor, 70 years old, seemed like ancient person at the time since we were 26, and brilliant former dean of the Michigan Law School. And we uh, became great friends and colleagues, and he asked us to be his chief consultants to his committee to write the Uniform Anatomical Gift Act, which we completed by the next summer in 68. They have an annual meeting of all the commissioners from each state, there are three from each state, and they approved it unanimously. The American Bar met the next week, they approved it. And so we had all these connectors and salespeople, as Malcolm Gladwell likes to say, that makes something work. You need a maven and a connector and a, a salesperson. But this was 30 years before he wrote his book. So at any rate, within three years, it this law passed in every state in the District of Columbia. 
amazing. No, and none of Absolutely. their Absolutely. Have, yeah, in the 127 years they've existed, none of their laws have done so well. Why did it do so well? One, it's a donation law. It allows you and me, Mark, to donate, to take effect after death, whether it's with a donor card, whether it's now by registry, by computer. And it also makes it very clear that if we have not said or made it clear in writing what our wishes are, that our next of kin in a specific order of priority can donate for us. And then there's a very other very important uh, aspects of the bill, but it's a short, concise bill that allows anybody to opt out of organ donation if they have a religious belief or they just have had a bad experience in their family or whatever, which is, I think, the reason that there was no objection, no, no religious group or no other group. The other thing we did that's part of our recommendations is bring all stakeholders into the discussion if you can. Now, in our polarized society, that's a little harder. But as Biden just showed, if you keep trying, sometimes you get some things done. And in our case, it was bring the funeral directors in, in as well as the eye banks and the Kidney Foundation and all the people that would be interested. So we sat around a room after the law was passed and said, we're going to come out of this meeting today with a uniform donor card that you can put your own logo on but the donor card is going to be the same in every state and every person's wallet. So I that's think that's kind of cooperate. So cooperation is another one of our big um, lessons. Cooperate uh, instead of compete. We're almost out of time and I'm going to invite you to come back. Maybe you'll bring your brother if you can in, in, in a few weeks, a month or so. Um, there, there's so many things that we can, we can talk about. Um, the the fact is that healthcare in this country is is like a jigsaw puzzle. It's it's and, and there are pieces missing from that puzzle, which frustrates the hell out of somebody who's building a, 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 that puzzle. So I'm inviting you to come back. Well, that in, was in, wonderful because I'd love in, to talk about some more of. The- the po- we have to keep thinking positively. We have to, that's one of our other lessons. Keep a positive attitude. You can't get down. Well, the book is called Pluck. And uh, is it out yet? I have an advanced it's, copy. It's out. It is out. It is out. So it's available at Amazon and we're... Amazon we're... or your own local bookstore. And it's hardcover, softcover, and Kindle. Gotcha. Uh, Take a look at this book. It's really an important book. Uh, As it says on the cover from Donald Berkwick, uh, a gem of a book, and it truly, truly is. Uh, I'm Mark Gallen, and I thank you very much, Fred, for uh, being here with us. Fred Sadler, uh, we'll have him back uh, maybe with Blair as well. All right, we're going to take time out. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Lyme disease and mold as Late Night Health continues.